if you've got a 250 mile range pack, um, you know, you're gonna need 4,000 cycles. Very achievable. We already do that with the stationary storage solutions like power pack, ready to play power pack with 4,000 cycle life capability. Hey, this is Warren Redlick. Let's talk about Tesla's upcoming super battery, ultra super crazy awesome battery coming from Tesla really soon. Tesla is developing batteries that are capable of not only 1 million miles, but we may see battery life up to 5 million miles. This is a super long battery life. We are also going to see batteries that charge from 20% of charge up to 80% of charge in less than five minutes. Super fast, super charging. We're going to see increased battery densities up from the current 250 watt hours per kilogram in the Model 3 up to as high as 500 watt hours per kilogram or more. The increased energy density of the batteries mean either lighter weight battery packs with the same range or similar weight battery packs with much longer range. If Tesla goes with lighter batteries with the same range, that means Tesla will have more batteries to be able to make more cars. We're also gonna see much faster, super fast production of batteries. Battery production is going to increase more than 50% a year. One of the first things to understand is how Tesla gets to 1 million miles in the battery pack. And this is actually, believe it or not, easy. Currently, it's common to see a 250 mile battery pack in a Tesla Model 3 or a Tesla Model Y. If you add to that, that the battery is able to achieve 4,000 cycles, 4,000 cycles meaning from zero battery charge to 100% battery charge and back. If Tesla is able to achieve 4,000 battery cycles, which believe it or not, they're already accomplishing in their research, this will happen. If you get 4,000 battery cycles with a 250 mile pack, that's 1 million miles. 4,000 times 250 is 1 million miles. But it doesn't stop there. The Tesla Model S is already approaching 400 miles, a 400 mile battery pack. They're at 390 now. If you do a 400 mile battery pack with 4,000 cycles, you get 1.6 million miles. 1.6 million miles. Take it to the next level up. The top of the line Cybertruck model, the three motor Cybertruck, is expected to have a 500 mile range. If you do 4,000 cycles with a 500 mile range, that's 2 million miles of range on the car. 2 million miles of battery life on that car. But we get more. The Roadster is projected to have 600 miles of range. 600 miles with a 4,000 cycle battery pack is 2.4 million miles of battery life in the Tesla Roadster. But it's going to get better than that. So there are two battery chemistry developments that have happened fairly recently that will take Tesla well beyond 4,000 cycles of battery life. In the earlier days of lithium ion batteries for electric vehicles, there was a problem. If you use the battery from zero, you, you drove the battery down to 0% and then you charge it up to 100%. You have this cycle where, you, where you're fully draining the battery and fully charging the battery. That process puts the most stress on a lithium ion battery. It stresses the battery materials badly and the cycle life is worse. It turns out with the earlier battery chemistries, if you kept the car between the battery between 40% to 60%, you ran it, you charged it up to 60%, you drove it down to 40% and you charged it up to 60%, that's when you got maximum battery cycle life. The batteries would last a long time because you weren't straining the underlying materials inside the battery. The problem is that only going from 40 to 60% means you're only getting 20% of your range. So if you have a 200, let's say a 300 mile battery pack, that means you can only go 60 miles a day before you recharge. And that doesn't, that's not what people are hoping for with EVs. Temperatures are also an issue in the early days and really the current days of uh, electric vehicles. The temperature has a big effect on how the battery life lasts. When you have higher temperatures, the batteries don't last as long. Tesla is very good about managing temperature during the life of the battery to keep that battery life longer. I mean, we are super deep on cell, super deep and cell, cell through battery. Uh, the rabbit, holes, uh, rabbit hole goes down pretty far. Man, do we know a lot about right. battery. We, we do have more, a decade plus of experience of not just like what a cell should be, but how to integrate it into the product. And that's really helpful. Yeah.
Yeah, absolutely. And how to manage the, the cell and the module and the battery and through different weather conditions and different environmental and different charge regimes. And wow, we, we really know a lot about batteries. But there are new materials, new battery chemistries that are making this problem much less important and going to extend battery life. In research, they start with pouch cells that come typically from a factory in China, and that pouch cell has no electrolyte additives in it. The researchers add different electrolytes and play around to see what gives them more battery life, what allows the cells to last longer, what prevents, what, what different electrolytes limit the problems created by battery chemistry and, uh, and charge cycles and storing at full limits. What the research showed was that choosing the right electrolyte additives makes a massive, massive difference in how long those batteries will last, how long they will retain capacity, how well they will retain capacity over time storing battery charge and over cycle life, charging out, discharging the battery to zero and charging the battery up to 100. They still don't have a great theoretical understanding of why one electrolyte works and why another electrolyte doesn't, what really makes this all work. They just know they just, they just keep trying different materials to see what works and they have some insights into, they see one material working well, this other material is similar in some ways, let's try this. And they're looking for something called coulombic inefficiency. When you have more coulombic inefficiency, inefficiency is bad, then the battery doesn't last as long. The capacity fails quicker. In the process of doing their research, they found some electrolyte additives that made a huge difference. The important thing to understand about the chemistry research, because there's a lot going on, there's a lot of different chemistry issues. Every battery has a cathode, an anode, and electrolytes in the middle. And there are different materials being tried out, and this has been going on for years now, different materials being tried out both in the cathode, the anode, and in the electrolytes. Although something is called uh, lithium ion, um, the actual percentage of lithium um, in a lithium ion cell is approximately 2%. Yeah, a cell should be called nickel, the nickel graphite, because the, the primary constituent in the cathode is, or in the cell as a whole, is nickel. On, on the anode side, it's, it's graphite with uh, silicon oxide. And then there's a little bit of um, lithium in there, but it's kind of like the, it's like the salt on the salad. A small percentage of the mass. It's, it's still important to avoid uh, supply constraints and to make sure that the uh, tail doesn't wag the dog on uh, cost. The, the main determinants of the cost of the cell are the price of nickel in the form that we need it, and you know, there's a little bit of cobalt and some aluminum, um, and then the, the cost of the um, synthetic graphite with uh, the silicon oxide coating. Some research is pushing towards lithium iron phosphate batteries for some uses. There's a lot of push in nickel manganese cobalt, uh, both nickel manganese cobalt 532, which is 50% nickel, 30% manganese, and 20% cobalt. There's now a shift to NMC811, which is 80% nickel, 10% manganese, and 10% cobalt. That has two big benefits. One, it reduces the amount of cobalt. Reducing cobalt on its own has big benefits because cobalt is both expensive and troublesome. The NMC811 chemistry appears to have higher energy density, which means lighter batteries can hold more storage. More, they can hold more energy, which means the battery, you'll have more range in a car. The other uh, issues relate to the electrolyte additives. What's going on in the space between the cathode and anode? Putting different additives in the batteries makes a huge difference. And a third thing is single crystal materials in the electrodes. If they use the normal materials that have been used in electrodes that are not single crystal, they're polycrystalline materials, the different materials expand and contract, and in the process of doing that, it causes microcracking. And that microcracking dramatically reduces the number of cycles that you can get out of a battery. At the same time, there's two big issues that researchers have found. One is if you store a battery at full, it tends to lose capacity faster, but there have been some improvements in cell chemistries that allow batteries to retain capacity longer even while remaining full. Another big issue is the charge-discharge cycle. As the battery fills up and uh, goes back down, and as the battery charges and discharges, you're filling the battery up with energy, you're uh, discharging energy from the battery to power the, the wheels of the car. 
then um, the charge discharge cycles tend to cause a problem called micro cracking, particularly when you use polycrystalline materials in the anodes. More recently, researchers have found that single crystal materials, that these single crystal materials are expanding and contracting. They, they expand and contract, but they're not pushing against other crystals nearby. They're seated in carbon black, and it ends up dramatically reducing the micro cracking, so you get more, a lot more cycles. And we're seeing as much as 8,000 cycles with minimal loss of battery capacity in some applications. I'd like to tell you that researchers are going to come up with one magic battery solution that's going to be the perfect battery for every situation. But I don't think that's the case, and I don't think it's important. We're seeing with, with Tesla doing these new batteries with CATL, yes, they're lower energy density, but those batteries cycle better. They retain their capacity longer even with substantial charge-discharge cycling. So it makes sense that different batteries would be used in different circumstances. For example, the batteries you might use for energy storage, to store energy from solar or wind, to back up the grid. The types of batteries you might use for that would be different or could be different from the batteries you would use in a high-performance sports car. And that might be different from the batteries you would use in a tractor trailer in the Tesla Semi. So I think we're going to see different applications for different uses. Just as an example, the Tesla Semi, you would expect that those are driving very long distances and they're expensive and you want them to last for a very long time. You want them to be able to go a lot of miles. So the type of battery that most supports a long mileage, a long life uh, process would be particularly good for Tesla Semi. Something like the lithium iron phosphate batteries that Tesla is working with CATL in China on might be very, very appropriate for Tesla Semi. At the same time, something that does a high, a high fast charging and fast discharging approach. If you think about something like the Tesla Roadster where performance is everything, then the goal of a long battery cycle life is not very important. Sports cars aren't typically driven for hundreds of thousands of miles. You would be happy to get, you know, getting a half a million miles on a Tesla Roadster would be fantastic. So it seems sensible that Tesla would tweak the battery chemistry and approach to handling the Tesla Roadster so that it would have high discharge rates. It would be able to put a lot of power out really fast to, to dramatically improve performance. Same thing with the Model S Plaid powertrain, maybe the Cybertruck tri-motor. The goal here is to be able to get very, very high performance because that's what people are paying for in a performance model. If you're going for a vehicle like the Semi or perhaps like a regular Tesla Model S or a Model 3 or Model Y, you may be thinking, you know, we're not shooting here for high performance. Um, not that the performance would be bad, but that's not the primary goal. A third thing that occurred to me was with something like Tesla Semi, which is going to have a really large number of batteries, it would make sense to have more than one charging port. Rather than just charging in one spot, you could have, let's say, four separate battery packs in the larger Semi. The Semi would be large enough that it would be able to hold it doesn't need the energy density because it's so large, so you could use lithium iron phosphate, and you could have maybe four battery packs, each one of them charging separately, which would allow it to charge much quicker because you're charging out of four ports. In one recent research paper, a group of battery researchers were able to achieve well over 5,000 cycles of charge discharge, full dis charge discharge from 0% all the way to 100%, obtaining over 5,000 cycles with minimal loss of battery capacity, maybe 96, 97% battery capacity remaining after 5,300 cycles. This is just amazing. This is fantastic results. So at this point, we're out to well over 5,000 full zero to 100 charge discharge cycles with well over 90% battery capacity retention at the end of the battery's life, you know, after 5,000 cycles, more than 5,000 cycles. So putting the worst kind of strain on these batteries in terms of both temperature and charge discharge cycling and storage capacity, you still get nearly 3 million kilometers or one, over 1.5 million miles of battery life. And that's on a 200 mile battery pack and it lasts over 20 years. So now when you throw in improved electrolyte additives and single crystal materials, we are talking about approaching 8,000 cycles. 
The battery life will last 8,000 cycles. This is huge, this is massive, this is amazing. We started out hoping for 4,000 cycles. We, are, or we know we're already at 4,000 cycles, but down the road we're gonna to get to 8,000 cycles, and 8,000 cycles matters. Another huge development in progress is improvements in energy density. The current generation of battery technology gets to maybe 250 watt hours per kilogram in the Tesla Model 3 or the Tesla Model Y. But we're about to see a revolution with a substantial increase in energy density. A lot of people think the next level is gonna be 330 watt hours per kilogram. I think we're gonna get there very soon, but not far down the road, maybe two or three years, we're gonna hit 400 and then 500 watt hours per kilogram. So if you imagine a Tesla Model 3 that currently has a 300, let's say a 300 mile battery pack, just to use a simple example. If you take that 300 mile battery pack and you say, you know what? We've got twice the energy density. You can now either take the same amount of battery weight and get a 600 mile battery in a Tesla Model 3, or you can say, you know what? We don't need to use as much battery mass in the Tesla Model 3. You cut the mass of the battery down from the current weight, you cut it in half, and you're dramatically reducing the weight that the Model 3 has to carry while maintaining the same range. So on the one side, you could say, we're gonna see a 600 mile plus Model 3. And you could look at the Tesla Model S and say, we're gonna see an 800 mile Tesla Model S. The other side of it is we're able to make cars in a more battery efficient manner that the design of the cars ultimately changes because you don't need as much structure to hold the mass of a larger battery pack and the battery pack ends up being more efficient and you see a Tesla Model 3 perhaps getting 350 or 400 miles of range with a battery pack that weighs half as much and you save hundreds of pounds of weight on the car. If you really get into it, getting 500 watt hours per kilogram may make it more possible to have electric airplanes, but Elon's been pretty clear that Tesla's not gonna go there. Man, <laughs> building an electric airplane has a lot of difficulty associated with that. It takes a massive amount of effort to do any one of these things, so you can't do them all. Tesla is going to make similar progress on its battery materials, pushing that nickel, cobalt, aluminum. They're, they've definitely been clear they're going to reduce the amount of cobalt. They're going to find ways to increase that battery energy density to allow more lithium into the batteries, and that will increase the amount of charge it can hold. And we're going to see them approach, they're already leading in battery energy density, they're gonna extend their lead and they're gonna get there. They're gonna to get to that 500 watt hours per kilogram. Let's say Tesla's able to use half the number of cells to make a Model 3 that they're currently making now. Let's leave aside everything else and just say they're gonna make the same Model 3 but they only have to use half as many cells to get the same range. That means they have twice as many batteries available, which means they'll be able to make twice as many cars. It gets better than that because once you get to the point where you realize we only need half as many cells, you can engineer the car differently. You need less structure to hold those batteries and it decreases the, t the weight of the vehicle. So you actually get more than more range with half the batteries because you've reduced the weight of the batteries and you've reduced the weight of the structure of the vehicle to hold those batteries. And so that means that you're probably gonna see a Tesla Model 3 with close to 400 miles of range with half the battery cells. And again, that's gonna allow Tesla to make twice as many cars. Same thing with the Model Y, this is coming. This is a couple years away, two, three years away, but this is coming. What's always the biggest hurdle for Tesla and any company that's trying to do what's Tesla doing is production, getting the manufacturing down and then increasing production, getting more and more batteries produced. Tesla has been limited by the number of batteries produced. They're not able to make any more cars. Elon said this at one point, that it doesn't matter whether they make Cybertrucks or Model Ys or Model 3s. If they don't produce more batteries, they can't make more cars overall. The, the thing we're gonna be really focused on is uh, increasing uh, battery uh, production capacity because the, the, that's very fundamental because you know, if you don't improve battery production capacity, then you end up just shifting uh, unit volume from one part to another, and you haven't actually produced more electric vehicles. That's part of the reason why we uh, have not, for example, really accelerated uh, production of the Tesla Semi, because it does use a lot of cells. And, and unless we've got a uh, lot of battery cells available, accelerating production of the Tesla Semi would, would then necessarily mean making fewer Model 3 or Model Y. So with the acquisition of Maxwell Technologies and Hybar, 
and with all the work that the Tesla team is doing, they are developing ways of making batteries themselves, making them faster, making them better. One of the challenges when you manufacture batteries is some of the cells end up not being good, and you have to improve the quality of manufacturing so that you have more good cells out of what you're making. But the biggest thing is just to, as everything Tesla does, it's the machine that builds the machine. The true difficulty and where the greatest potential is, is building the machine that makes the machine. In other words, building the factory. And really thinking of a factory like a product. You know, we're gonna to try to create a car by ordering a bunch of things off a catalog. We, we design the car the way it should be. Um, and then we make, uh, either we or with, with working with suppliers, make all of those individual components. The same approach um, is, is the right approach to take when building the machine maker. Uh, the, the, the factory. I actually think that the potential for um, improvement in the machine that makes the machine is a factor of 10 greater than the potential um, on the car side. Tesla is, is going to improve the manufacturing methods. Um, they're going to further automate. They're just going to make it so that they can produce more batteries faster. And by producing more batteries faster, they'll be able to produce more cars. And we will see more Model 3s. We will see more Model Ys. We're seeing Cybertruck coming soon. And getting more batteries is essential to being able to make the Tesla Semi, which requires a lot of batteries. When you combine higher energy density with longer battery life and improved manufacturing volume, what you end up with is a lot of great options for what you're going to do going forward, what Tesla is going to do going forward. One option is to say, you know what, we're just going to make really long range vehicles. We're going to turn the Tesla Model S into an 800 mile vehicle that will last for 5 million miles. You can end up with a Tesla Model S with an 800 mile battery pack that's able to achieve 8,000 cycles, which is 6.4 million miles. Now, if you ask me, once you get beyond 1 or 2 million miles, it becomes useless. So the question is, what else can you do with these improvements in battery chemistry? What else can you do with this improvement in battery life? Well, you can say, you know what? We don't need to attain five or six million miles of battery life. We can increase the discharge rate, which in a vehicle like, say, the Tesla Roadster would allow the Roadster to accelerate even quicker. We can increase the charge rate, which allows the batteries to charge much quicker. If you increase the charge rate, you may be able to get those batteries charged from 20 to 80% in just five minutes. You may be able to do the full zero to 100 in five minutes. And now the biggest complaint that we hear people make about electric vehicles is, oh, it takes too long to charge. Well, that may not be the future. It may be that we're able to charge them much quicker in the future. And that choice, that choice of increasing the ability to discharge energy quickly and to charge quickly means the battery life won't be as long. But if you're starting with an eight with a with an eight thousand cycle life, and you put these limits on it, and you only get to a four thousand cycle life, but you have a six hundred mile battery pack, you're still getting two point four million miles of life on a Tesla Roadster with a six hundred mile battery pack. You could see a Tesla Model Three with seven hundred miles of range, or you could see a Tesla Model Three with three hundred fifty miles of range but much less cost to manufacture, and a lot more of them. You could take the higher energy density battery pack and allow the Model 3 to have a higher charge rate and a higher discharge rate, and then what you would see is that yes, instead of getting, you have, you have your 700 mile battery pack that could conceivably go out 8,000 cycles or 5 million miles, we're gonna compromise that battery life to improve performance and to improve charge speed. So you're able to charge that Tesla Model 3 battery pack in five minutes or so. You're able to go from zero to 60 in three seconds. Personally, I don't think performance is gonna be a critical feature in the future of EVs. I think in the future of EVs, we're talking about robo taxis. And I think the most exciting thing is when we're heading towards the future, and I'm gonna make a video about this down the road, about the future of single passenger lightweight pod cars. They might have a 25, a 20 or 25 kilowatt hour battery pack, but they're very lightweight, so that carries you a long way. They're lightweight because it's basically just the skate and a arguably just recyclable plastic shell because they never get in crashes. It would be able to charge extremely fast. They'd be very small. They take up less space on the road. 
maybe hyper efficient. You might have a city car that's optimized for city driving. You might have a, a highway version, a long distance version that's optimized for long distance travel where it's lower, more aerodynamic, and it's geared for higher speeds. So altogether, we have a very exciting future with Tesla's new battery technology. We're gonna learn a lot more about this on Battery Day in April, assuming Battery Day goes ahead. I think the, uh, the current pan panic in the United States over uh, infectious disease has changed how people are thinking about things, so maybe we're not gonna see it as quickly as we'd like. But as far as we can see, Tesla is going full bore ahead with its research and development of these technologies. And we are going to hear fairly soon about a gigafactory producing Tesla batteries. My prediction is that at some point with the success of the Model Y, Tesla decides they don't need to produce the Model X anymore. And they use the space currently taken up in Fremont for building Model X, they use that space for battery production. It could be that they use that space for something else and they can produce batteries somewhere else. You can see with Giga Shanghai, how efficiently they've laid out the manufacturing space to improve um, the process to lower the cost of manufacturing and improve the speed of manufacturing. We're going to see something very similar with Tesla's battery production coming very soon. One of the most important things that Elon has stated as a goal and is very clearly a goal is reducing the cost per kilowatt hour of these battery packs. Continue to improve the cost per kilowatt hour of the batteries. This is, this is very fundamental. Um, and extremely difficult. It's actually one of the big advantages of the lithium iron phosphate battery chemistry is it doesn't involve cobalt. It does have higher weight or uh, lower energy density in the battery pack, but it doesn't involve cobalt, which makes it a lot less expensive. So there's a few things that Tesla is going to do to dramatically reduce the cost per kilowatt hour. One is just producing in higher volume. You get economies of scale. Two is tweaking chemistries. So the NMC811 uses a lower proportion of cobalt. So for applications where they're going to be using the nickel manganese cobalt 80%, 10%, 10% formulation, the cost of cobalt goes down and that makes the cost of batteries less expensive. On top of that, we have technologies we don't really know a lot about from Highbar and Maxwell that may further reduce the cost per kilowatt hour. Right now, Tesla's approaching $100 a kilowatt hour. Coming, The cost of battery technology is coming down close to $100 per kilowatt hour. It seems reasonable that we will see Tesla get down to maybe $80 a kilowatt hour. But again, with the different types of batteries that Tesla may be using, I think we're going to see different applications. So the lithium iron phosphate appears to be the least expensive format. I think we'll be seeing a lot of a lot of the, the shorter range vehicles will start using lithium iron phosphate. This is, I'm not saying I know, I'm just saying this is what I think makes sense, is Tesla wants to produce vehicles in volume, so it's important to produce more and more batteries. CATL is clearly going to increase their output. At some point, Tesla is going to be making their own batteries. Uh, they already have lines using certain chemistries, particularly nickel, cobalt, aluminum. So it's unlikely that Tesla will stop any of their existing lines. They've already expressed that they think it's important to continue producing lines that are efficient and effective. The 18650 lines, you know, have been running smoothly for a really long time. And uh, in a world where cell supply is, is, is fueling growth, like or yeah. part of the, 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 the fuel of growth, I don't see a reason to turn that cell supply off. So. But I think we're going to see Tesla adding new lines of battery production in different places. They may rely on CATL in China to produce lithium iron phosphate. It's likely that they will find another place to produce batteries. My own prediction, and this is kind of an out there prediction, is that Tesla will stop producing the Model X. That the Model Y will basically replace the Model X. The Model X is expensive to produce, it's difficult to produce and it takes up a lot of space in a factory, then that space can be used for producing something else. Now, whether it's used to produce batteries or something else, I don't know. Elon is clearly talking about opening more gigafactories in different places, and an important part of that will be producing more batteries. So it's likely that we are going to see a, a variety of batteries that Tesla is going to use. The other thing I should mention is when some batteries run out of usefulness in the cars, it makes a lot of sense to continue using those batteries for 
grid storage, that the demands of grid storage are less than the demands of vehicles, and it's likely that Tesla will find a way to take a battery out of a vehicle, let's say the battery's down to 90% capacity, and that vehicle's driven a lot of miles and is no longer, is maybe somewhat obsolete compared to whatever's new at that time. As part of recycling the materials in that vehicle, you take the batteries out and you can apply them in grid storage. It might not be part of Power Pack or Mega Pack. It might be some future product that Tesla puts out that uses the recycled battery material, um, uses those recycled batteries to uh, create a grid storage product that costs less because you're using batteries that have already been paid for. I'm very excited about the future with Tesla. I know we're going through a difficult time now, but we're going to come through it. Tesla's going to come through it. Tesla has a great cash cushion thanks to that capital raise. We are going to see uh, Tesla taking the lead in the automotive industry, making particularly with battery technology, particularly with um, self-driving technology. Tesla is, is taking the lead in so many ways, over-the-air updates, etc. We are going to see tremendous improvements in automotive and transportation in America and the world. Let's stay excited about it. Let's look forward to the future. Thank you very much for watching. If you like what you've seen here, please uh, subscribe. Please let, it, let me know what you think in the comments. And I want to stress, very soon I'm going to do a new video about pod cars. I think this is the biggest thing going forward in the future is we're going to see a future of these one passenger, maybe two passenger cars. People do prefer to drive in their cars mostly by themselves. I mean, the average number of occupants in a car, I think, is like 1.2. And maybe with autonomy, maybe it'll go to 1.4, maybe. Um, but I'm not sure if that even, it even goes there. That are much more lightweight, much more efficient. I'm very excited about that future. Stay tuned. It's going to be amazing. You know, again, I know we're in, a, we're in difficult times when I'm making this video, but our future is very bright. I'm, I'm always optimistic about the future, and I want us to all stay optimistic. Yeah, we've got, we're hitting a bump in the road right now, but Tesla's going to plow through it, SpaceX is going to plow through it, and we're going to plow through it, and our future is going to be fantastic. Thanks for watching.